Hi, so this is going to be a prologue implementation of Quicksort, and I'm not going to explain Quicksort too much. Uh, if you did learn it before but you forgot, you can just look up Google Images, it's going to be very easy to remember, but I am going to run through it very quickly on this array, just so the rest of the code makes sense. So, uh, Quicksort has a pivot. Uh, in our case, uh, pivot is always going to be the first element in the array, so let's pick the pivot in this array, it's going to be 4. Um, as you know, what happens next is we pick this pivot, then we run through the rest of the array and compare every element to the pivot. If it's less than the pivot, I'm going to place them to the left of the array or to the left of the, of the pivot. If it's greater than the pivot, I'm going to place it to the right of the pivot. So let's see this in action. So uh, 4 is the pivot, then 2, 1, 3 are less, and uh, 5, 6, 7 or hold on, this is not meant to be sorted yet. Uh, this is greater. So as you can see, we ended up with two arrays and here we're gonna do the same thing. So two is, becomes the pivot. This is actually gonna be a recursive call to the quick sort. We're gonna do it twice. One time for this array and one time for this greater than array. Uh, two is the pivot, one to the left and three on the right. We're going to separate them by commas. 5 becomes the pivot. There is going to be nothing on the left and 7, 6 on the right. Another recursive call. All of those empty, all of those one element arrays. I actually didn't want to sort them, but I'm going to show you just as an example. So 1 becomes the pivot. This is going to be empty. This is going to be empty. Then for 3 is going to be the same thing, so I'm going to skip it. For this empty, uh, we don't have to sort it, it's an empty array, it's already sorted. And then for 7 and 6, it's going to be, it's going to be empty, 7, no, um, it's going to be 6, 7 and an empty array. Then we have to uh, sort 6, but I'm not going to do that, you know how, how that works. And now we're going to return all those recursive calls so what's going to happen is this part uh, 6, 7 and an empty array is actually a sorted version of just this 6 and 7 so what we're going to do is just copy and paste so you see I don't want to explain this in too much detail because as I said I assume you know how quicksort works so I'm just going to do this so you know so uh, the rest of the code makes sense then when we're going to merge all of this line together like this. I'm just going to delete this altogether. We don't need it. I'm going to merge this. So the way I'm merging is uh, less than array plus pivot plus greater than array. So this is going to return as a sorted array of this array. And this is the sorted version of this array and as you can see this we're gonna do this equation again and we're gonna merge less than with the pivot like this and then merge like that actually in the implementation I think I'm gonna go P plus G first and then then I'm gonna less than plus the result of P plus G but okay that doesn't matter but as you can see we have a sorted array now so let's start writing the predicates so the first one is going to be just quick sort quick sort and what we're going to need here is we're going to partition it into two arrays then we are going to we're going to call quick sort on the less than array quick sort on the greater than array and then we're going to merge them uh, append is what it's called in prologue. Uh, I'm not, I don't have parameters yet, but we're going to start writing them now. So what quicksort is going to take is the original array, but from the original array we're going to need the pivot, which is going to be the first element. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the head and the tail of this array. The tail is just going to be used as an array to sort. And the second parameter is going to be the sorted array. Okay. So for the partition, we're going to need the pivot 
uh, head of the array, head of the original array, array is going to be the pivot. Then the array we're going to sort is going to be the rest of the array. And we're going to have, we're going to return from the partition call, we're going to return the less than array and greater. Then what we're going to do is call quick sort again, but this time we're going to use less than array. And this is going to be sorted less than array. Uh, sorted less than array is going to be returned by this call of quick sort. And we're going to do the same thing to greater than I should have left what I had here. So it would have made sense. But I hope this is easy to follow because it's just sorting the two resulting arrays of the partition. So greater, and this is going to be sorted greater. After what we're going to do is append uh, sorted less to the result of merging the pivot with the sorted greater. And the resulting array is going to be just our sorted array. And it's going to be returned over here. Okay, so this is the quick sort. Uh, if you need to pause it and understand how it works, um, what helps me is actually looking at this code and comparing it, uh, for example, to uh, an image, a Google image of how quick sort works. Uh, have a go at that, that might work, but I'm going to assume you're following with what's going on. And I'm going to write the partition predicate. What partition is going to take is the pivot. So this H here is the pivot. Sorry, I'm actually not using a mouse. That's why I'm skipping over the lines with the keypad. So it's going to be the partition, the array to sort, the less than array, and the greater. So on every call of the partition, we're going to need the head of this array. So what we're going to do is the exactly the same thing as we did in uh, quick sort. To take the head, we're going to just H and um, the rest of the array. So we're going to call a tail. And what's going to happen here is we are going to compare the head, which is the next element in the array, to the pivot. And what we're going to do is if the head is equal to or less than the pivot, we are going to we are going to add it to the less than array like this uh, for the time being this less than is unknown until we call partition enough times and it's going to start returning then it's going to build itself back up but for now we're going to add it like this and we're going to call another partition which is going to determine what this less is or this less than is so if uh, p is equal to or less than the h what we're going to do is call partition again actually we did everything in this line in line 11 and all we have to do now is call partition just normally with the tail less and greater I'm just going to copy this line because the next function is going to be almost the same. But this time, we're going to work with the greater than array. And what we're going to say is if the head of the array, if the head of the array is greater than the pivot, what we're going to do is we're not going to add it to the less than array. We're going to add it to the greater than array like this in the exactly the same way. There you go. So this partition is almost finished. All we have to do is, uh, all we have to do is look for when the tail actually runs out of elements, and the partition is going to be called with an empty array, and then we're just going to return an empty array for both less and greater to stop the to stop the recursive calls because we don't have any more elements to partition. So it's going to be partition. And actually, we don't care what the pivot is. I could put P here, but it's going to complain later in the console. I'm just going to leave it like that. So we're going to fix this mistake later. So if the tail is empty, we're returning empty and empty. And this is almost finished. There's one more thing. 
we have to do the same thing for quick sort. When we have no more elements to sort, we just have to return an empty array. So when this is empty, we're just going to return empty. So let's try to run it. I'm sure there, there are going to be some typos, some mistakes, but we will see. So clear the screen. Nope. Clear the screen. Run prologue. Then what is the file called? It's called sort. I'm going to load this file. Yeah, you see it's complaining on line 11, which is this line. It's called uh, complaining about singleton variables. So what we do in this case is just replace it with a don't care sign. So we don't care what we're looking for. This doesn't really matter. What matters is that the array is going to be empty. Yeah, so that's it. We'll try to load sort again. And this time it worked. So let's try to sort this array. I really hope that it's going to work and it's not going to end in an infinite loop or something like that. So let's, uh, let's just call quicksort. Quick sort off this array. And the resulting array is going to be called sorted. Let's do that. Or just S. Yeah, and let's call it. And there you go. This is the sorted array. And if we try to look for any, any other answers, it's going to return false because this is the only thing you can get here. So that's it. This is a quick sort implementation in Prolog. And uh, the next video in Prolog I'm going to do is uh, probably A star search algorithm because this is actually one of my assignments. So as I'm learning it, I'm going to share it here. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.